I mean, what even is an aperture? No, that's not some metaphysical question. There does actually seem to be a little bit of techie confusion over the hole that lets light into our smartphone cameras and onto our smartphone sensors. And did you know that not all apertures are created equal? Or when we're talking about specs on a spec sheet, we're gonna see a lot of very similar sounding numbers. So it's understandable why folks might think that they all mean exactly the same thing. I mean, specifically for our phones, we're gonna very, uh, it's very common that we'll see an aperture of f1.8. There are a lot of people out on the hiking trail today, but f1.8 isn't one thing. Uh, f1.8, or the aperture, what we use to describe an aperture, changes as other parts of camera hardware change, things like relative sensor size. The way we describe an aperture is actually a fraction or a ratio, f over another number or f over some kind of divider. Now this is really easy to demonstrate on a proper camera, one with interchangeable lenses. That f stands for focal length, focal length over some kind of divider. So let's say we've got a 50 millimeter lens and an aperture of f over two. What we're really describing is 50 millimeters divided by two, and we know that the physical size, the real hole for the aperture or the iris of that lens is 25 millimeters. It's all basic math. All cameras, all lenses, this is all basically the same, but it is a little bit harder to figure this stuff out on a smartphone. What we need to do on a smartphone is find not just the equivalent focal length, but the actual true focal length on these tiny little sensors. These sensors are adorably tiny, so likewise, we're dealing with really small focal lengths. But once we find out what those actual focal lengths are, we can hit this with some real math and look at improvements generation over generation. Uh, take, for example, one of my favorite all-time phones, an LG V20. That has an f1.8 aperture. And then we can follow that up with a Galaxy S21 at f1.8. And I'm shooting this on a OnePlus 9 Pro, which also has an f1.8 aperture. And based on the title of this video, I'm sure you can glean that those apertures, they're all not physically the same size. That LG V20 has around a four millimeter lens. The S21 has around a five and a half millimeter lens and a OnePlus 9 Pro or a regular OnePlus 9 has somewhere just over a six millimeter lens. So if we plug those numbers into our aperture ratio into that fraction, we can see that generationally from the camera sizes on a V20 to an S21, there's almost a 30% larger aperture at f1.8. And then again, we can see around a 13 or 14% increase in size of the aperture when we go from an S21 to a OnePlus 9. Now you see, it's all the same fraction. It's all the same ratio, but the final result of that ratio changes as we change other aspects of a phone camera like sensor size and the corresponding focal length of the lens paired with that sensor. If we really want our gadgets to evolve and improve over time, it's critically important that we work just that little bit more at understanding what's really going on with these kinds of concepts, how our cameras improve, rather than just lazily regurgitating a spec sheet and casually misrepresenting the differences from camera to camera. As tech fans, as tech enthusiasts, we really should try to understand what all these numbers mean. And thank you for coming to my tech talk. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos and subscribing to the channel, and I'll catch y'all on the next one.